Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. All right, here on Warship Wednesday, I'm going to bring you the current campaign ship, the Tier 7 American Premium Destroyer of the Summers. No, I did not gain 900 some odd subscribers overnight. No, I am not community contributor. Yes, I am a whale. I whaled out and I bought the Summers. Why? Why not? Oil, you know, the gas prices are going to be five bucks a gallon soon. So I decided to splurge. I'm going to get the summers. I'm going to bring it to you, my 120 loyal subscribers, including my brother. You don't have to call me and lecture me about wasting money. I waste money every day. All right, here we are in the summers. We're on this new map, the name of which escapes me at the moment. No, I'm not senile. I just don't care. Uh, by the way, while I'm at it, uh, please welcome back to the home of the Slightly Above Average Ship Review. I'm your host, KPZ, and I have got a match on Warrior's Path, a domination match top tier in the summers. Now, I know there are a lot of people out there that will tell you, see that? I just deactivated my AA. The summers has an AA rating of 11. Don't be fooled. The Summers is not a gunboat. Why do I bring this up? Well, it has eight gun barrels, two barrels per turret, four turrets. That's eight. I did not fail math. And there are people out there in the universe who will tell you that if a destroyer has eight gun barrels, it is a gunboat. However, the base reload of those eight guns is six seconds. So that's essentially like firing four guns every three seconds, like the Sims or the F-bomb or maybe the Monahan. So hold your horses a little bit on this gumbo talk. All right. There are other destroyers with a gun barrels like the Leone. Would you call the Leone a gunboat? I think not. Okay. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, but KPZ, wait. The Kleber has eight gun barrels. Yes, the Kleber has eight gun barrels. And maybe in real life, the French destroyers were intended to be gunboats. But the way that Wargaming brought them to this game, they are much more effective as torpedo boats. Prove me wrong. You can't because France doesn't have a gunboat commander. If they did, maybe we could have a different discussion. But they don't. They don't. All right, I'm messed around here in Alpha. I'm feeling very unsupported by my team. That hurt me deeply. As you know, I'm a very sensitive person. So here we see this Brandenburg just thinking he can sail right into the Bravo cab. Oh no, sir. Oh no, you can't. All right, so let's talk really quickly as we cap out Alpha. The Summers has three quad launchers in addition to those eight gun barrels. And uh, part of me, I got all the clemp there thinking emotionally about how much I love the Summers, which is probably not very much. Um, you know, you can get this torpedo reload down under 95 seconds. So that's what I did. All right. You can see here the Brandenburg is uh, blundering into our torpedoes. I really like this driving. Great, great job, dude. Thank you so much for giving me all those points. Look at that. And he's just going to bleed out here. This is the great part about being in a torpedo boat. Your job not to be seen, just capture bases, hang out and fling torpedoes at people. Really a very low stress way to carry on with life. You know, if you're a gunboat commander, by the way, first blood, devastating strike. Kill number one on the Brandenburg. Now I get lit up by radar. I believe it is from, not from AL Montpellier, which Montpellier, incidentally, is the capital of Vermont. I knew you all knew that. Um, it's this cruiser behind me in the Alpha Cap, and I'd encourage my teammates to shoot at it many, many times. Here, we're gonna miss out on a kill, although I really didn't do anything to, to injure him, the uh, AL Montpellier, but we are still being radar, and that's why I know it's the ship behind me in the Alpha Cap. And I really, who's, who's shooting me now, and I really wish my teammates would kill him. It's not like I haven't been pointing him out since the beginning of the match. 
So they're just content not to. So I'm just going to spam the comms wheel a la T Bull. And then I'm going to run away. Because that's what you do in a torpedo boat. You run away. We're running away. Yeah. How about some help, teammates? How about taking that guy out? I got the first kill of the match. You need to promote me. You need to you need to make me the focus of saving your lives. All right. Now that I'm done being a self-centered jerk. Hey, we got a King George over here. Looks like he is trying to run away. Let's see if these torpedoes can chase him down. We'll just shoot one rack. I'm not getting greedy. And we're traversing into the Bravo cap. And guess what, folks? In a domination match, all say it with me. Your destroyer's job is to capture the cap circles. Yes, it is your job to capture the cap circles. So we are capturing the cap circles. And we already got one kill. It's kind of a bonus, you know. And there are a couple of destroyers out there. So we'll just see what we can do. We got a Tashkent and a Lay Fantask on the other team. The Lay Fantask is another ship that Wargaming would have you believe is a gunboat. It is not. The Tashkent, on the other hand, leans more to the gunboat. Although, I would tell you the Tashkent can go both ways. Because it has 8 kilometer torpedoes. Look at that. Speaking of torpedoes, one uh, 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 torpedo caught up with the King George. And as you can see, I didn't really realize it at the time, but uh, all right, never mind. Never mind. I thought it was going to flood, keep flooding. It did not. All right, we got a base cap there. Solo cap number two. All right, here's an Iowa doing some maneuvering here. So we're just going to launch some torpedoes his way. And just, you know, see what happens. See what happens. And the great part about a ship with three quad launchers is that, you know, you always got one left in reserve, you know? So I like to shoot two and hold the third one. And then if I really want to shoot it or have a good target like that King George over there, we'll let number three go. And look at that. I'm on a good team. We already have all three cap circles captured. So really... Right now, we're in what we call bonus time. Now here, the red team is starting to capture Alpha, it looks like. That's okay. We're gonna go into this binocular view and check out the Iowa receiving some torpedoes. Oh no, a lot of damage there, a lot of damage on the Iowa. And I believe we are over 100,000 damage. Yes, we are. Say it with me, the Summers is a torpedo boat. Now here, I'm not gonna get a reload in time, so I'm just gonna be very patient, back up a little bit, kind of chill out here. Torpedoes Obviously, I'm trying to be situationally aware, that's why I'm driving all over the place. Torpedoes we do get the King George with one of those torpedoes we threw out there. Kill number two. All right, so the Iowa is moving forward. We are backing up so he can't get behind cover. As you can see, the torpedo indicator is showing he's slightly behind cover at this point. And then here comes the Tashkan. Now look, my teammate already messed up the Tashkan. So I tried to give him a chance to have a gunfight with me, but he didn't really appear interested in shooting back and he never does shoot back. So don't be fooled, the Summers is not a gunboat. That Tashkent wasn't really trying to fight me. We are gonna launch some torpedoes. I'm not sure if that was at the Tashkent or just threw them out there at the Iowa, just cause we're spotted. So hey, I'll shoot at the Iowa some more. We'll shoot at the Iowa just to see if we can set them on fire, which we do not. And we go behind this island, but right there, I see the lion trying to horn in on my cap circle. I reviewed the lion in many different ways, and I thank you all for watching those videos. Some of my best received videos when I compared the lion to the monarch. Here, the lion is going to do something I do not advise, but let's be honest, I've done it plenty of times myself. You come out here and you think you're going to get some from a destroyer, and then you just wind up with a face full of torpedoes. So here, the lion is going to... Uh, See the power of the U.S. torpedoes. As you can see, we unlocked the high caliber. We left him hanging on a thread. Look at that. He hits that super heel, folks. He still had a super heel left and available. And so what went from near death 
change to a ship with about a third of its health left in just seconds. All right, he does damage me. Uh, pretty good there. That'll come to play later. The lion does have pretty good guns. He should have been using HE. Um, fair secondaries, maybe not the greatest. And so we're going to launch more torpedoes at him. And we'll see what they can do. But unfortunately for me, that much closer cruiser is also launching torpedoes. So even though my torpedoes look delicious, they are not going to get there in time. Because my teammate is going to kill Pinch. Oh, the story of what could have been. Just think if I could have gotten that AL Montpellier and finished off the line, we'd be talking about a Kraken right now. But we're not. We're not talking about a Kraken. Here's another chance for me to make one of those back up on the sign up. Nope, failed there too. I'm not counting this as a Kraken fail because we don't have four kills going for the fifth. That's an official Kraken fail. When you got four kills in the bag and you're going for your fifth kill, that's a Kraken fail. We only have three. All right, here's the last ship. I mentioned it before. The Le Fantasque Tier 7. French Tech Tree Destroyer. Look at all those torpedoes in the water. Don't tell me the Lay Fantasque is a gunboat, folks. But they nerfed the torpedoes, Ouija and all their brilliance. Did they nerf the torpedoes? I think they nerfed the torpedoes. And I was all up in arms about it in a video called Don't Nerf This Ship. If I remember, I'll, uh, I'll try to stick that link in here. Um... But I was like, yo, it's a torpedo boat. What are you nerfing the torpedoes for? So anyway, we're just trying to get within firing range here. This uh, cruiser seems to be struggling with taking out the Le Fantasque. I, uh, I missed his name there due to uh, my impaired vision. So we're finally in gun range. We will start engaging Le Fantasque. At first, he's coming towards us. I really like the way this looks. As you can see, a bunch of more torpedoes. We're going to spread these out in case he cuts back or goes forward. We're going to give him some good coverage. We're going to fire at him, but I'm out of speed boosts. And even though this destroyer is fast, it cannot hang with the French and Russian destroyers. And look at that. The Le Fantasque takes out the cruiser. I believe that is his third kill of the game. All right, so here we're at a hit point deficit due to the lion messing us up earlier. We're just going to try to run this guy down. And uh, we're not, we're not going to be successful at it. And although we are not going to get hit with torpedoes, he's a pretty good aim. And I guess we're giving him good stuff to aim at, even though I'm trying to bow here and I do a pretty good job. Evading that salvo. At the end of the day, I don't have enough support to take him out one on one. And even though he's only hitting me with like one shell out of these salvos, or several shells that time, um, you know, I think you can look at my hit points and realize I'm not far for this for this world. And there is the kill. Probably gonna clip it here, so don't be alarmed if I. All right, and there the battle ended. Time ran out. We had all the caps. Here we are on my favorite screen. You know it is. High caliber metal, devastating strike metal, first blood metal, 166,633 total damage, 12 big torpedo strikes, three kills, two solo base caps. We ended up with 493, 242 silver and 6559 ship XP and commander XP in the summers. All right, and there we are, the team result top of the board, 3363 base XP with those three big kills. The mines below me had a good game as well. And of course on the enemy team, Lay Fantask, you sir had a good game, uh, but you know, the rest of your team sucked, so. That's that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's go into the port and look at the summers. Uh, aiming system mod one and slot two, we got propulsion mod two. 
Then we got Concealment System Mod 1 and In Slot 4 Torpedo Launcher Mod 3 as we're playing this as a torpedo. All right, consumables, two charges of the smoke generator, two charges of the engine boost. We were running that common battle booster for speed. Got this Type 9 permanent camo and the Independence Day 21 flag. 17,300 hit points with our build. Got those four twin 127 millimeter turrets. I think 10.9 kilometer firing range, 6.6 .6 second reload, 12.2 second turn time. HE shells do 1800 damage with a 5% fire chance. AP shells do 2100 damage. I did the math. If you put Mordoff in there, your DPM would be 187,826 a minute. Uh, you know, a fully kitted out Akizuki can get over 300,000 DPM. So, further underscoring that the Summers is not a gunboat. In my opinion, just one guy's opinion. You know. All right, here are those torpedoes I've been waxing on about. Three quad launchers reload in 94.9 .9 seconds. Max damage 17,900. Max range 12.6 kilometers at 70 knots. They are pretty quick, and detectability is 1,400 meters. AA defense, you saw at the beginning of the match, the first thing I did was disable the AA. I would only turn that on if you were in a smoke screen and an enemy fighter plane was right overhead. Otherwise, it isn't going to do any good. Max speed, 42.1 knots, 620 meter turning circle, 3.9 second rudder shift time, and concealment, 5.4 on the surface, 3.1 in the air, 2.6 when firing in smoke. Here's a look at our commander, Albert Gleaves. Level 16, legendary level 2. We got Bay and Swirsky. Base trait increases torpedo range. We ran subsurface venture. Look at me now. I hate to say it, fragile threat for this destroyer line of U.S. destroyers isn't worth it anymore. You only loot, get 100 extra meters of concealability. If it was still a 10% bonus and a 10% deficit, then you would be at 5.2 kilometers. I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, perceptive in row three, destroyer be destroyed in row four, and unstoppable in the legendary skill. That is a look at the summers. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And remember this, the summers is a torpedo boat. Hear me now, but leave me later. Thanks for watching, everybody.